Hello brothers and sisters, I'm the Judgmental Adventist, also known as George Tasker. I hang around discussion groups, inhabited by atheists from time to time, which I enjoy doing very much, given that they have a care for the truth, similar to that of Christians. The only difference is that we argue over what that truth is. And just recently, a question came by an atheist, and it goes as so. Is it possible to have a church or religion that submits itself to data and reason while still holding on to mystery? A church or religion that sees its religious text as immensely valuable, but submits the text to data or reason, and allows the data or reason to inform the text rather than the other way round? Or are these two endeavours mutually exclusive? Well, from my point of view, the short answer is yes, they are mutually exclusive. The Bible is an atomic unit of truth that cannot be added to or taken away from without fundamentally altering its character. Every time human data and reason have been allowed to hold sway, the individuals concerned generally reject the Bible completely in recognition of the fact that human data and reason lead to positions that contradict what the Bible teaches. And now for the long answer. The question submitted recently addresses a question of ultimate authority. There are many things that one can consider to be the source of ultimate authority outside of the Bible. There is culture, tradition, victimhood, lived experience, your truth versus my truth, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, and many other entities that can be considered as sources of ultimate authority. Today we focus on data or reason and whether the Bible should bow to the authority of data and or reason. It really comes down to what you choose to accept as the ultimate source of authority. When you speak of data and reason, are you referring to human reason alone? Because if you are, then we are doomed, as we are not capable of rising beyond our own reasoning ability. Consider the fracas that ensued once Donald Trump decided to go for the presidency. One side claimed he was racist, ist this and phobe that. The other side claimed he was none of those things. When such contradictory claims are made by opposing parties, then only one side can win. The arbiter of who wins and loses will be based around what is commonly accepted as ultimate authority. If there can be no agreement on ultimate authority, then war is the inevitable result. This war can be a war of words, it can be a cold war, or a hot war, but war it will be. Christianity has been at war with every other ideology in the world, and its holy book, the Bible, admits this to be the case when it describes the scriptures as being a two-edged sword cutting asunder human reasoning. So we go to Hebrews 4 verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. By definition, a true Christian will, apart from recognising Jesus as Saviour, will also assent to the Bible as being the ultimate authority underpinning his ideology. Given that the heathen do not accept the Bible as any kind of authority at all, this leaves the Christian with no other option than to take what the heathen accepts as ultimate authority and beat them over the head with it. That is, point out how by their own reasoning system that their own belief system does not have a leg to stand on. 
Now, if I submit the Bible to data and reason, then it is no longer the ultimate source of authority. And yet, while Jesus was here on earth, he appealed to the authority of the Scriptures all the time. Often, his first response to any kind of challenge was to ask this question, What do the Scriptures say? The penultimate example of this recognition of the authority of Scriptures that Christ subjected himself to was in his battle with Satan, known as the Three Temptations. Each temptation by the devil was met with an appeal to the authority of the Scriptures. Not once did Christ ever appeal to his own authority. Now, for me to accept the authority of the Scriptures as being ultimate, I have to accept a certain number of assumptions of the nature of God as being true. Assumption number one. God is all-knowing. There is nothing that can be known that he does not already know in all times, all places and all realities. Number two. God is perfect. There is nothing that he can be faulted for in spite of the best efforts of Satan. Number three. God is love. He cares about humanity and all created beings wherever and whenever they were created. Number four. God is holy. Evil cannot exist in his presence. Now based upon the third assumption, it would be fair to say that God cares enough about us to ensure that within reality provided by this earth, that he would protect his written word so that even today, thousands of years and hundreds of copies later, it is sufficiently faithful to the original autographs that we can have as much confidence in current copies as those former copies of thousands of years ago. He would ensure that those copies give a true and accurate picture of what he himself is like, and that he will also ensure that we are very clear and what he expects of us while we live on this earth. Finally, you have to consider what you mean by data and reason. Is the Bible data? Is all input into our senses data? Is reason real? Does reason continue to exist after we die? From whence came reason? By referring to data and reason, are we deliberately restricting it to the material universe? Should we restrict it to the material universe? Is it possible that the existence of reason, which I assume all on both sides of the religious atheism divide agree on the existence of, is it possible that its existence is proof of an immaterial entity's being established fact? Is it possible that there exists reasoning which is out there that is beyond our own ability to grasp? Children are often not able to grasp larger concepts of reasoning that adults accept and deal with. What would you do if you came across someone with an IQ of a thousand? Would you accept they may be well be dealing with levels of reasoning that our own limited minds may fail to grasp? Is anyone who has studied the Bible to any degree will attest to the fact that the more they study it, the more that they realize how ignorant they are of biblical things. Like a child on a beach playing in his little puddle, oblivious to the great ocean just a couple of meters away, the first time reader of the Bible is nearly always dealing in the puddle of words contained in the Bible, completely oblivious to the great ocean of truth that exists within its pages. For this reason, I think it foolish for any Christ-based church that lays claim to biblical authority to allow data and reason or any other recognized entities outside the Bible to hold authority over the Scriptures. I'm George Tasker, your Judgmental Adventist.